could antibiotics actually be causing cancer for you in the future? We're going to look into the research. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead, where we give you the ancient art of homesteading with a scientific twist. And let's look into the research here. So potentially the greatest drug in all of human history has been antibiotics, according to researchers. And so what are some of the things that they suggest that are very beneficial about antibiotics? Antibiotics have been shown to, uh, to be able to slow the growth and kill many types of infection. Now that's very, very beneficial. Uh, number two, in some cases, such as before surgery, antibiotics can prevent infection from occurring after the surgery. That's also very beneficial. Number three, some will begin working within a few hours. And last of all, they're easy to take. Most antibiotics are oral medications. Uh, your doctor may decide to give you an injection if it is imperative that the medicine gets into your system quickly. So we see that there have historically been many beneficial things about antibiotics. That's why they've been prescribed so readily for you know decades. And so we see many, many benefits to them. But are, are there also some serious, potentially deadly side effects Let's look into the research. Now, don't, don't trust me. We're just looking at the research, and you do with this, this information what you would like. I grew up taking antibiotics like crazy. I took them like candy as a child uh, for, you know, just all kinds of allergies and so forth. I was taking them all the time. Uh, but let's look at the research. So in a, in a UK study over, of over 200,000 people, it was shown that every course of antibiotics increases an individual's risk for depression by 23 to 25%. You say, oh, that's just, you know, just increases your chance of depression by uh, 25%. But let's go even further. For every two to five courses, it increases the risk of depression by 40 to 56%. It also raises the ch their chances of having anxiety. So taking antibiotics, and many of us have taken them over and over and over and over and over throughout our lives. And so we take it once, it increases our chance roughly 25%. Take it two to five times, it increases our risk of depression by roughly 50%, and it increases the risk of anxiety. But let's go even further. So what about antibiotics in our number one killer, which is heart disease, right? That's right. So researchers have looked and they did research on 36,000 429 women reported in the European Heart Journal, it reveals that higher usage of antibiotics during middle age and later life is significantly correlated with cardiovascular disease events in life. Now, is it that they're unhealthy and so they need more antibiotics, or is it that the antibiotics are actually causing the heart disease? Who knows? We're not 100% sure. Maybe, it, maybe it's a little bit of both. Uh, good question. And but let's look at even more research here on antibiotics and Parkinson's disease. A nationwide case controlled study of Finland revealed a 41% increased risk of Parkinson's disease in people taking certain oral antibiotics. It seemed to be a delayed effect of up to 15 years, potentially because of bacterial changes in the gut called the microbiome. The greatest correlation was in those who had taken macrolides, so I'm not sure how you say that, or lincosamides. Uh, and I probably said those wrong. I'm not a doctor. And a doctor and so but here's the thing so what they found is that so taking these things may not necessarily sh cause you know Parkinson's disease tomorrow but it may have a delayed reaction of up to 15 years and if this is the case that the antibiotics that you took 50 years ago may be causing disease today you could imagine it could be ridiculously difficult to tell if your antibiotic usage years ago is causing a disease that you have today or exacerbating your disease that you do have. It'd be very difficult to tell. But you can see as we use drugs that are, that are not necessarily natural to our bodies, it can have serious effects. I'm not telling you not to take them, but I think it's wise of you to know what you are taking and the potential side effects that it may have. But what about cancer? It's a great question. Uh, antibiotic usage in cancer. The European Journal of Cancer looked at research on 125,000 plus people uh, with cancer and it matched them with over 490,000 control individuals. They discovered that people who took more than five courses of penicillin had a 40% increase of risk of gastric cancer. This is incredible. So not only our number one killer heart disease may it increase your likelihood of having heart disease, but number two, uh, one of potentially our second greatest killer cancer it increases your chances of having gastric cancer 
also. So this is something to really consider. What about lung cancer? They also find a, found a 40% increased risk uh, for lung cancer in those who took more than five courses of penicillin and other kinds of antibiotics. So same thing we see that lung cancer, gastric cancer. What about rheumatoid arthritis? Many of this, these diseases we don't know the cause. We say we're not sure why you've come down with this uh, terrible form of arthritis where your joints seeming to be attacked by your own body. But let's look at the research here. Research, researchers looked at over 22,000 people with rheumatoid arthritis and matched them with over 90,000 people without rheumatoid arthritis. And the chances of becoming diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis was 60% higher in people who were exposed to antibiotics. So antibiotics potentially increase your risk of rheumatoid arthritis, which is a dreadfully painful disease, uh, when maybe never having them would make it significant, you make it so that you'd be significantly less likely to have this disease. The great thing is there are things that you can do and we'll, we'll have, uh, you know, videos on them on our, on our YouTube channel, Health and Homestead. So you want to look back for that. You don't want to miss the, the information on rheumatoid arthritis. Other diseases, studies have also been done that suggest that other diseases like juvenile idiopathic arthritis, autoimmune liver disease, and type one diabetes risk may be increased by antibiotic use. So we're looking at all kinds of diseases that are increased with usage of antibiotics. This is serious, like type one diabetes, so other forms of arthritis. But here's the thing, one of the potential factors, now many of these studies were actually human studies. This next study that I wanna share with you about is not, it's a rodent study. Now they took mice and they gave them antibiotics and what they what they discovered is that it passed on to their progeny to their we could call them children they call them pups right um cute name for baby mice right but uh so they passed it on to their pups what a bad microbiome meaning the bacterial makeup of their physiology is actually worse in the pups, the baby mice that came from mothers who had been taken antibiotics. Could it be? Now, we've already talked about the fact that uh, simply taking these things could increase our risk for cancer. Could, I don't know of any research on this yet, but could it, since it could affect adults, could it also affect children whose mothers who had been taking them? Uh, especially, obviously, in birth, many women are given antibiotics just before or sometime within the process. And so could it be that they might be passing on bad bacteria to their children or bacteria that's not as good. Now, you're thinking, oh, I want to get rid of all bacteria. That's why, why, why I take antibiotics. You don't want to get rid of all bacteria because bacteria is actually good. Uh, we will have videos coming out. I've already done videos, but we, 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 we have videos coming up on showing the benefits of good bacteria on both the outside of your body and internally. And so you don't want to get rid of all your bacteria. But here's the thing. I'm not telling anybody not to take antibiotics, but I think of someone like myself, maybe, maybe you know of somebody, you know, I used to live a very unhealthy lifestyle and then later on in life, uh, changed to eating a healthier diet and just living a healthier lifestyle. And sometimes you see really healthy people and then they die of cancer and you say, see, yeah, you know, you live a healthy life, you eat healthy, it doesn't do anything for you. Uh, you die of cancer anyway. Now, some of the other things like heart disease, we know how to reverse that. Type two diabetes, we know how to reverse that in the vast majority of cases. When it comes to cancer, it's more difficult. There's some things that we can do that can lessen our chances, but some people eat super healthy, exercise, live a good lifestyle, and still die of it. Could it be, though, years before they took antibiotics? Their body's been damaged beyond repair, and as a result of it, their body can't fight off the cancer that is naturally produced. Our, most of us have had cancer at some point in our life, or at least some cancer cells, but the body normally can fight it off. So we wanna to learn to live a healthy lifestyle that will help us to live into our older years and live the best life that we possibly can. And that's what we do at Health and Homestead. And if you wanna learn more about it, uh, hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a great day.